We start out in Jerry's world. That's where we go. Jerry's world. We have in-depth team coverage of the Dallas daytime drama. But it's playing out in the late night hours. So if you have not been paying attention, maybe you're not watching the NFL playoffs. As the world turns, the Dallas Cowboys were absolutely flummoxed by the Green Bay Packers down 27 to nothing, 48 to 16 in their own stadium. And the assumption was, well, okay, that's a fireable offense. Surely Jerry Jones is going to get rid of Mike McCarthy. There's no way that McCarthy can keep his job after that. As Jerry Jones said, it's the the worst thing that he's been a part of in team sports. He's owned the Cowboys since before the Internet. Think about that. Anyway, so uh, we discovered, though, surprisingly, that Mike McCarthy, the rotund coach of the Dallas football team, will be back. He's going to come back. He's like Poulter, guys. They can't get rid of this guy. So for a fifth season – with the Cowboys, which means they'll win a bunch of games in the regular season, and then they'll go belly up the first good team they play or when Dak decides to poop the bed in the playoffs. But in a prepared statement that was released by the team czar, Jerry Jones, he released the statement. He uh, said the following. uh, He made a declaration. He said, I believe this team is very close and capable of achieving our ultimate goals. And the best step forward for us will be with Mike McCarthy as our head coach. There is great benefit to continuing the team's progress under Mike's leadership as our head coach. Close quote. All right, so let's break this down. We'll parse the words of Jerry Jones, and we'll discuss in general the state of the Dallas Cowboys. So the question, What message is Jerry Jones sending? What message is he sending to the Cowboy fan base and the Cowboy franchise by retaining Mike McCarthy after losing a game to a seven seed in your own stadium and having no chance to win the game? So I've got the good doctor, a little white chapel, and subterfuge. And we will combine all of these things together. We'll throw them all against the wall and see what sticks. Now, A, to me, this one's pretty straightforward. The messaging of Jerry Jones. It's not that complex. You don't have to be that smart to figure it out, which is good because I'm not that smart. But based on a preponderance of the evidence, Jerry Jones continues to moonlight. Not only is he the cowboy GM and the cowboy owner and all that, he continues to run a little ice cream shop. It's actually a truck. It's not an ice cream shop. It's a Mr. Softy truck. Jerry Jones is a Mr. Softy. We should have known when he kept the clapper around all those years. And Garrett should have been fired years earlier, but they kept putting him out there. And Jerry kept saying the same crap he's saying now. We're getting close. We're going the right direction. I believe in this coaching step. Blah, 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 blah. How'd that work out? Uh, now we've got the clapper on television boring us. My God. All right, anyway, uh, again, based on a preponderance of the evidence here, Jerry Jones continues to go soft when opportunities present themselves. What does one have to do to lose their job? Seriously, in Dallas, like, what do you have to do to lose your job? I don't know. Uh, last year they blamed the offensive coordinator. They got rid of him. They kicked him out. He went to the Chargers. And they're like, well, he's a, he's a bum. Well, Cowboys won a bunch of games in the regular season, and same thing happened first time they played a good team. Now, they didn't win a playoff game the year prior, but that doesn't count because they played the Buccaneers, who were a joke of a team that year, the broken-down defense, old man Tom Brady, uh, and all that. Now, uh, is there a comp? Is there a comparison to McCarthy in the industrial complex of professional sports? I'm glad you asked. There is a perfect comparison to what the Cowboys are doing with Mike McCarthy. And that comparison, we call it the good doctor. Is this not the football version of Doc Rivers that Mike McCarthy won a championship with the Green Bay football team with Aaron Rodgers? And Doc Rivers won a championship with the Boston basketball team. He went out there and won with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and that era of the Celtics. And then Doc Rivers ran off to coach the people's team, the Clippers, 
and they kept him around the Lob City days there. They kept him there for that, and then he went to Philadelphia, and they kept saying, well, he's got that championship. He knows what he's doing. Mike McCarthy won, as we said, in Green Bay. He's in Dallas now. He's heading into year five, and looks like he has no clue how to coach a team in a playoff game. But he's the doc. He's Doc Rivers, Glenn Doc Rivers. And he must be in these meetings a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. He's got to be Mike McCarthy. Right? He went into a meeting after giving up 48 points to a seven seed, a pathetic Packer team, and still, still kept his job. What could he have possibly said? Does he have photos? Maybe he had a hidden camera in Jerry's world, and he has some video or photos compromising Jerry Jones. Uh, who knows? But uh, that's Settle where we are. Just a little bit. I know. It's, we're not circumcising a mosquito at this point. Uh, but he, he's now a lame duck. I did not see anywhere. Maybe you saw it. I did not that the Cowboys extended Mike McCarthy, which means he is heading into the final year of his contract, which likely means at that point they'll just wait another year and then he'll be gonzo. But not the Muppet gonzo, but he'll be out of here. See you later. Now. Page two, how does Mike McCarthy continuing on as the head football coach of Jerry's world, how does that affect the quarterback? What does this new revelation in Dallas do to impact Dak Prescott? So this tells us right on the surface that the Cowboys are more likely than not to reward more bad behavior. They rewarded Mike McCarthy by letting him keep his job. And from what I've been hearing, I was texting some people about this during the evening hours, and uh, the general sense is that Dallas Cowboys are going to give Dak Prescott a new contract, that they're going to take care of him, and they're going to you know, claim this, that, and the other thing. But they're, they're going to go in. Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott are going to go into a little white chapel, and they're going to renew their vows. Uh, and Dakota Prescott, we said it the other night, that he's the straw that stirs the drink, but... He's a paper straw. He disintegrates in key moments. That's a, that's a good line. I think I might use that on the TV show this weekend. I think that's a solid line. Maybe we'll use that on Benny versus the Penny this weekend. But anyway, nonetheless, listen. Dakota, seven playoff games, two and five record, eight years, I believe, at the helm of the Dallas Cowboys. And people said it's going to be different. I remember when people used to take shots at Tony Romo and talk about Tony. Tony Romo is masterpiece theater compared to Dak Prescott in these games. He is. People forget, right? Romo. I'd rather have Romo than Dak Prescott in a playoff game. Now, if I want somebody to fill up the trash can with garbage stats, I'll take Dakota Prescott. But, my God, it's ridiculous. But he's going to get a new contract, and they're going to say, well, he's got a no-trade clause. He's got one year left. There's a salary cap hit of 59 million smackaroos. If they don't redo the contract, but they can't trade him unless he approves of it. He probably won't. And they can't use the franchise tag. Who negotiated that contract? What dumb dumb negotiated that contract? So the contract that Dakota Prescott has right now will be torn up from the floor up, and they'll give him a new, a new deal. And then Jerry will just shrug, and he'll mumble some words out and then he'll say, everything's going to be great. Don't worry. Keep buying your Cowboy merchandise. Cowboy Dan, keep calling the Maller Show after the after we win. You know, come on. Have we done a welfare check on Cowboy Dan? Do we know if he's all right? He probably thinks this is a great move. All right, now last word here. We're going to turn the page to teams still alive in the NFL playoffs in the NFC. That would be not the Dallas Cowboys, but instead – Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay plays Detroit in the Motor City. Bucks are a pretty big underdog in that matchup. Uh, however, there's an underlying story here, and it involves Baker Mayfield. So, Baker Mayfield heading into the Motor City, and he's got, wait for it, a big chip on his shoulder. Where have we seen Baker Mayfield with a chip on his shoulder before? Now, this one courtesy of C.J. Gardner Johnson, the former, former. Philadelphia Eagle defensive back. You see the uh, Lions uh, defensive player uh, said of Tampa, he said, quote, if you give that Tampa group a good quarterback, that's a great group. We're talking about the wide receivers with Evans. He said Godwin, Gage. That's a great group. I played against them for real. 
said C.J. Gardner Johnson. So obviously that was a shot at Mayfield. Uh, Mayfield responded, responded as we play tennis back and forth. Not to be set on love, he wanted to get some points on the board. So Baker Mayfield came back and said, well, uh, hey, listen, uh, listen, he said. Well, you know, listen, let's hear from Baker. Rather than me give you what Baker said, here's Baker Mayfield in his own words. Let's listen to the audio. I don't think he's very much film because uh, he mentioned Russell Gage. You know, we love Russell, but Russell hasn't played a snap all year for us. Uh, he must be going off the preseason stuff that the media was talking about. But he didn't play our first game, so I'm excited to see him. I think he's a really good player. Um, he has been for a while. He's been an impactful guy on every team he's been on. So he, he's, uh, he's a good player, but, yeah, he's got to do a little bit more film study. So he couched it a little bit at the end. Does that count as a full – uh, you know how you, you meet with a boss and they do the uh, the sandwich thing where they start out with a compliment, then they rip you, and then they finish with a compliment? Yes. Is that, is that, that's kind of what it sounded like to me. Uh, it's in that, in that realm. So Lions uh, defensive player safety C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Bulletin board, board material. A big deal. Right? Bulletin board material. Is it a big deal? Is it a little deal or no deal? So I have this in the no deal category. I have this one in the no deal category. We have long preached from the bully pulpit of Fox Sports Radio's powerful microphones that this story is in the same category as momentum. It's bull crap. It's stuff dumb people say, meathead ex jocks that get TV jobs. And it, I blame the sports writers originally because they came up with this stuff to fill space in a newspaper column. And it's just been regurgitated year after year. I'm supposed to believe here that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to go into Detroit, get into the fetal position right at that Lion logo at midfield and start sucking their thumb. But because C.J. Gardner-Johnson called them out, now it's on like Donkey Kong. Come on. What are we doing?